basically for the range, so any other that makes sense. What are the options of the player that are depth offer than a campaign? certainly do. Yeah, it's just not a good play. It's such a low percentage para. Oh, Hanskin gonna get cut out by MMY. Even if he's only the one, it's gonna be enough to set up the magic missile here. Tusk has yet to choose his skill. Gonna try to put maybe ice shards right when he gets to the oh. top of the cliff. But oh no! What kind of ice shard that? He did not mean it at all. And that's first blood going to the heroes. He's so. I'm, I'm sure the click behind him, and yet. Guys, shards go wonky. I Reaction he doesn't connect. Maybe he just kind of gets to keep doing his thing here. As soon as he sees the arrow go by, he's like, oh, "Okay, time to start orb." And Chelsea really can't punish it at all. Now up top. Oh, that should be really good. actually. That'd be a guarantee. On the sun strike through, and Invoker gets himself a freebie. Where maybe was the first, even though he didn't see this vision be picked up. But I think it's just gonna have to be an assisted arrow here on the side. Gonna go for it. Oh no, RTK is moving too chaotically. And there's gonna be a Dream Coil. They're gonna go through on it. They're gonna be able to finish him off with the board. And back up top, RTK gets comp on uh, Limp. Stops both his stun and the drug is still gonna be a problem. So that's like a waste of from Alright, it's gonna be a very difficult position for the Tusk as he rolls forward here. Maybe he doesn't have the orb, doesn't need it to finish off the Tusk. And that is gonna be a killing spree for him. Top this, but does have a little sick, just needs a real tier rotation. Try to make something happen against Limp, but it's gonna be coming from Pug. Doesn't seem to have enough damage. We'll see. The Warcry comes out pretty early. Maybe does get the orb here. We'll be able to follow up the silence. That should be enough damage if they could just follow through the phase shift dodge here. But the reinforcement of the Tusk, and now maybe it's caught out. Gonna have to use another orb. It's on Z Freak. Can't kill him. Oh, it's a hard bend from RTK, and it's gonna be a magic stick that is unnecessary. As the strike into the, so if they can stop him from getting more than just this last set of CS, it's gonna be 50 gold away when they make the jump here. If he doesn't get this last hit, he doesn't get his Midas. Oh no, Jesse! Gonna be going down just before he gets the hand to Midas. They'll drop the Sentry under tower. They'll silence him. They'll click him down, and that is a huge loss there for the Invoker. It's something that probably won't be dewarded immediately. It might be the second Sentry they place. Yep. Oops. Gets killed by the Yeah. I think what their aim is is for him to have as much solo experience and gold as possible. They're just gonna make the jump. Look at that combo of damage. They don't even have a chance to cast a spell. Maybe slams them down with the door. These timing uh, in their head is go. Solo as long as possible to get that big oh, valley. But we're gonna see Siler get hit by a big storm, and there is gonna be the combo with the Night Blast as well. They take down the Terra Blade, no chances to thunder, but it looks yeah, already a lot of damage coming through. Well, one more boulder smash, and people are gonna be dropping very low, but it looks like Roche has fallen in favor of complexity. The Aegis goes to Invoker, but the main look hit to turn that around as we see the Magnetize doing so much work. There, it's gonna be RTK. Hitting the Chronosphere just on the chassis as a nice snowball comes through, but it's not going to be enough to save the line of complexity. They've lost everyone. The Invoker will come back for our last hurrah. He'll get a kill on the Earth Spirit and blink. But he will going down at the end. That's a 5 for 1 plus 8. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they were the ones with the Venge, it'd be better, but, oh, Venge does get caught by this arrow. It looks like she'll be going down. RTK has to time walk away. Hans can have three stone remnants to bring to this fight, so that's actually quite considerable. And they can bait as much as they want to with Silar. Lip, oh, quick and easy kill. Even phase shift dodging the arrow. It's just complexity. I'll just go take that phase on again. What? No. Oh, they already used the Moonlight and now they're gonna be regretting as they lose the Marana. Chessy blends back a tier as a bit of panic mode has ensued from the Sven, the Beastmaster. And then um, Sunstrike was sent out somewhere. We're gonna see BDC actually get caught out by the Cold Snap and enough stuns to bring him down, but. Even still, Dyer's might set up an opportunity for LGD to attack. respond as the Void comes to RTK does not have a blink, but they seem to still want some blood. They're not connecting. It just 
I guess the Tusk is really the only option. Actually, now it's a three-man cradle. They just grouped up for him. RTK set it up, but also fading in Baby, who gets hard stunned. MMY has to do some massive work here with the Magnetize. Only one stone left, and he's not going to even get the chance to drop it. RTK got a time walk to the high ground. No, it's slip to slap him down. And that's what we're going to see in the Moonlight Shadow try to flank the gank. We've got a Radiant... Observers to combo. RTK gonna get roared, but can they actually bail him out? It's gonna be tough. No, it's gonna be limp to jump in. Big link stun combo. Gonna bring down the bench now. The Earth Spirit, and they'll focus on the cores next. Gonna be terrible. Can't get his Sunder off. Didn't have them enough for it. Thanks to the Necronomicon mana burn. And we will see them going on the puck as well. And it looks like he's in some real trouble here as they get their fifth kill and like perfect. That's unfortunate. So, no terrible in position, no dagger on the face of Void means Aegis for the Invoker and a very kind of converge on them. And in fact, Silar might be in some trouble here. They don't. Have, they do have a smoke, so they will know this is real and they will go for the kill. This is such a big pickoff. He does have buyback, but that's still a lot of gold down the drain. Alright, at least Aegis 100% safe. Oh, oh he's had a Oh, that's not good. RTK, 50 seconds. Maybe getting caught. Maybe could be a huge kill here. They'll roar him. They'll bring him down. The puck has no buyback. And Lip pops everything to just absolutely crush the Earth Spirit. Silar, the last man standing. Now, those ice shards he wanted. We're going to see us knock down the Terror Blade. Triple kill. Puck is hero. Like, even the face of Blade alone, I don't think could do it. They need maybe alive as well. Oh, they're catching him. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The arrow connects on Silar and Complexity have just done it. They've knocked the Terror Blade out. Silar calls GG for his team. And that's the Complexity have actually pulled this one out. What looked to be just a dominating performance around the 14 minute mark by LGD turns into something completely different as Complexity just takes a team fight after team fight. They turn around engagement after engagement. It really came out when the Sven got his blink and when the Beastmaster started getting involved. But like you said, it also goes back to LGD's mentality. They felt like this was in the bag. Yeah. They knew that they were in control cool. and yeah. they got cocky because of it. They overextended the arrogance 